Old Testament reading from Proverbs 25, 2 through 10. It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search things out. As the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver, and the smith has material for a vessel. Take away the wicked from the presence of the king, and his throne will be established in righteousness. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence, or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. What your eyes have seen, do not hastily bring into court, for what will you do in the end when your neighbor puts you to shame? Argue your case with your neighbor himself, and do not reveal another secret, lest he who hears you bring shame upon you, and your ill repute have no end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from Hebrews, chapter 13, 1 through 17. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hostility to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Remember those who are in prison, as, those in pris as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, since you also are in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let, marriage, and let the marriage bed be undefiled. For God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Keep your life free from love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of the way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not, let be, do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods, which have not benefited those devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burned outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise of, to God, that is, the, lip, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please continue with the hymn as the deer on the next page.
rise to the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. Then he took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, Which of you having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day will not immediately pull him out? And they could not reply to these things. Now he told a parable to those who were invited. When he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, When you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, Give your place to this person, and then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. He also said to the man who had invited him, When you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers, or your relatives, or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed, because they cannot repay you. You will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Today we're going to talk about humility and being humble. How does the Bible look at these terms? Well, the truth of the matter is, is that the Bible looks at the terms humble and humility differently than we generally do. When we think about humility and being humble, we attach the concept of not being a bragger not being a braggart. We say the person who is humble is not pulling a Muhammad Ali and saying, I am the greatest of all time. That's the person we think who is being humble, who is not talking about themselves, who is not talking about how great they are and everything they've accomplished and all their great stories. We attach the concept of being humble and humility often with words. And even when we deal with false humility, what do I mean by that? I mean by that the person who is actually trying to build himself up, he will use his words to put himself down and hope to bring uh, you into the conversation to build him or her up. So a person might say, oh, I am so stupid. And then hopefully in the back of their heads, they're thinking, Oh, when I say I'm so stupid, somebody will say, Oh, no, you're so smart. Don't be so hard on yourself. You're a smart guy. Even when we deal with uh, false humility, it's attached to the concept so much of speaking and saying that we're great or that we're not great, that we take pride in our actions or we don't take pride in our actions. But this is not how scripture talks about the words humble and humility. There might be tastes of it, might be hints of how that they use that in scripture. But here is the more specific ways that they use the word humble and humility in scripture. Number one, what is a humble person? A humble person in scripture is a person who has a low status. It's not that they don't say that I'm great. No, they're just a low status person. The Bible talks always about orphans and widows and the poor people. These are humble people. Why? Because they have this humble attitude and they never brag? No, but because on the ladder of life in society, they are on the low rung, okay? They are humble, that means low. Another thing in the Bible, when they talk about humble and being and having humility, it talks about people who trust in God. And very often, 
the poor who are on the low status in the Bible also have great trust in the Lord. They don't have anything else to trust in. And so they trust in the Lord, and there is the humble poor. They have low status, but they trust in the Lord for everything because they don't have anything. And finally, in regards to humility and being humble, the Bible does this. You are being humble. You are being a person of humility when you lift up others by your actions. That's being humble. That's an example of humility. If you think today in the gospel lesson, Jesus really wants you to have proper etiquette at meals where you sit, you're missing the flux of things that he is saying. He uses that as the springboard to talk to about a religious authorities who have forgotten about love for neighbor and are putting even their own ox ahead of the neighbor. Jesus says, if the ox falls in the pit, won't you get him out? <coughs> and you guys don't even care about getting this guy out of the pit of the illness of dropsy? Where's the love? Then he talks about the seating stuff, about if you really want to be glorious, you need to be humble. There is where the humility is coming up. That is where being humble is coming up. Did you read, did you hear from the letter of Hebrews what they talk about there? Christians are in prison. They're part of the body of Christ. What does the writer of Hebrews say? Go and visit them. People are strangers. They're bringing the gospel of Christ. What are you supposed to do? Take care of them. This is you being humble, being a servant to others to lift others up. You are being humble by taking a low person who has nothing and giving them something. You are being humble by being a servant in your life. It really has nothing to do about, oh, are you a bragger or not? But when we think of humble, we think of humility, we think of people speaking. Above all things, humility in the Bible is somebody who takes action. The humble person is someone who takes action to lift up others. And so we have our Savior Jesus. What do we call him? We call him the humble servant, even the humble slave who does what? He does everything to lift up even people who are his enemies, even to lift up the world, people with a low status compared to him. He is Lord over all. He's perfect. And what does he do? He takes on your sin and lifts you up to perfection, sinless perfection, by taking your sins away. He is the ultimate servant. He is the ultimate humble person. Why? Not because he, has, uh, he doesn't brag. No, because he takes action to build up those who are low. And what are we? Well, we're humble. We don't brag. We don't talk ourselves up. No. Are we humble? Our Savior is. Our Savior is to us. He's our Savior, and he's our brother. He's our Savior, He's our brother. So what are we? We want to be like him. And what does that mean? We want to be humble. We want to lift others up. We will take action. First, in the body of Christ, and then to anyone. Our hearts and minds and hands will be open. And it doesn't matter exactly what the specific action is being done as long as it is done to lift others up. That's how we are humble in the church. That's how we show humility in the church. And when that happens, do we brag? You betcha, but about Jesus, who has taken care of our hearts, taken over our hearts, so in our lives, what we do above all things, try to be like him, humble servant. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now continue.
uh, with the Apostles' Creed. But we're going to talk a little bit about the Apostles' Creed as part of our liturgy instruction. Before you stand up, here are some things. We speak the Creed now because we have just heard the Word of God expounded to us. How do we respond? We respond by saying, this is specifically what the scriptures say about our God. Okay, So you receive the scriptures, and now you proclaim scriptural truth, a summary of who our God is in scripture. Now, how did this creed come to be? The Apostles' Creed is kind of mysterious, but this much we do know, that it developed over time. When people wanted to be baptized, they eventually came up with something like this. What do you believe in? I believe in God the Father Almighty. Who, who else do you believe in? Well, I believe in Jesus the Son. Who else do you believe? I believe in? I believe in the Holy Spirit. And besides that, there was controversy. Back then, there was a lot of problems with the thought that the material world is evil. And what is pure and right is the spirit and the soul and ideas and concepts. But the material world was bad. In fact, many people thought that the world was created by a stinko God. But the concepts and ideas and the soul was made by the superior God. So when the Christians started to confess the Apostles' Creed, what does it say? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We are not ashamed of our God who embraces the material world, who got his hands dirty with the material world. It's not about all lofty ideas and concept and soul. It is about the material world. And then what did he do to save us? He sent his son who materially took on a body. In fact, he was born into this world, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered. He actually died. This is an odd son of God, but this is what people would proclaim then when they were baptized, a faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And specifically, that this God was a God who was not ashamed to connect himself with the material world. We confess that faith now in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the church. Lord Jesus.